So Mark Gurman dropped a bomb in the Apple news this week with this tweet right here saying that Apple is working on a touchscreen laptop for 2025. And now a lot of people, especially Apple purists, are mentioning that video and that keynote. And it turns out it doesn't work. When Steve Jobs came out and announced the iPad and then talked about why they're not going touchscreen on their Macs because it doesn't make sense, it's not ergonomic, and things of that nature. And now while I am in the camp that maybe MacBooks don't need a touchscreen because they work perfectly fine as they are, I do think there are a few reasons why it does make sense. So here are three reasons why I think it makes sense to put a touchscreen panel on MacBooks moving forward. And leave some comments down below about what you guys think as these go on, because I'm very curious to know, would you buy a touchscreen MacBook? Is it something that you think you need, or is it something that maybe it would be nice to have overall? But let's get into this video. So before we get into the reasonings as to why I think a touchscreen makes sense on a MacBook, I do want to reiterate and go back to 2010 when the iPad was first being introduced. And one of the reasons why Steve Jobs and Apple introduced the iPad was for multiple reasons, but one of them was because they didn't think that a touchscreen belonged on a MacBook because touchscreens are meant to be on a horizontal plane and not on a vertical axis because over time it's ergonomically you know terrible as that famous quote does say you know your arm would eventually get tired from touching the input of a macbook over and over and over again but again that was 13 years ago now at this point and now we live in a world where it's things like the ipad attached to the magic keyboard do really make sense so the first reason that i do want to touch on as to why macbooks having a touchscreen makes a little bit of sense is because look at how the new OS is kind of have meshed and turned into a very similar OS. If you look at Mac OS Ventura and compare it to iPad OS and iOS 16, they're starting to have a lot of crossover in the UI and what it looks like and how it feels. Yes, obviously we still have those small little circles to close out, minimize and enlarge, which will be very, very tough to use as a touch input, but look at how the settings are now made up. First off, you see that in all of Apple's native applications, they've changed the way that you navigate that into what it looks like, especially on the iPad. So if you look into the system settings, which again is something that they changed the name of from system preferences to system settings, which is the same thing that they call it in iPadOS and iOS, but you see that all the navigation is done on the left-hand side. Same with the Photos application, with the Notes application, if you open up Safari. So all of Apple's native applications have the same UI elements and the same UI look and feel as its touchscreen counterparts on iPadOS and iOS. So that's a reason why it just makes sense to put a touchscreen on the Mac computer. And again, it's not going to be the main form of input. It is going to be a secondary and tertiary way of interacting with the device. The touchpad and the keyboard will never go away. And obviously we saw the touch bar come and go as a quote unquote failure in my opinion, but putting a touchscreen on the actual screen itself is not that far fetched. And again, we're not living in a world of needs, we're living in a world of nice to haves. But if you go through macOS Ventura, you see that there's a bunch of other UI similarities with iPadOS. Look at Control Center. Control Center now comes from the top right corner, just like it does on iPadOS, right? We also have all the similarities of the app icons. The app icons are becoming more playful, more bubbly. They're bigger. They're easy to touch if you do want to press on it and touch it with a finger. And then if I don't know if you guys have ever used Launchpad. So Launchpad is always on by default on every Mac computer. It's usually the second application on the bottom left-hand side of your dock. And if you open up Launchpad, it's literally all of your applications in one touchscreen ready kind of interface where you can swipe back and forth. Yes, you use your touchpad to actually move everything back and forth and click on it, but that can very easily be used with a finger to swipe between applications and have kind of like an app library, very similar to the way we have an app library on iOS and iPadOS. Even though I don't think Apple has any plans of merging those OSs and they will keep it separate to a certain extent, there are gonna be a lot of similarities, and I think most of the differences come from third-party applications, not the native applications. If you open up a native Safari on iPadOS versus macOS, or you open up the Notes application on macOS and iPadOS, they're very, very similar. It's not until you get into the third-party applications like Photoshop or Affinity Photo, or things like LumaFusion versus Final Cut. These are all things that are a little bit different because they're made for different devices overall. But if you look at just the native applications, they are very, very similar. My second reason as to why I think a touchscreen makes sense on a MacBook computer, I'm gonna go more towards the Mac Pros and the MacBook Pros and that kind of realm. Maybe the MacBook Air and the lower level MacBook Pro, the M2 MacBook Pro that didn't get a design change, maybe those will stay with a regular LCD panel or LED panel that doesn't need a touchscreen input. But think about for people that are coding for these applications, right? For iPad applications, for iOS applications, working inside of TestFlight, working inside of SwiftUI. A lot of the time the touch input is sampled and mimicked on a non-touchscreen device like the MacBook. So you're using your mouse and keyboard to mimic what it would be like to use your finger. 
So imagine a world where you're coding on one side of your screen with Swift UI or whatever code base that you use. And then on the other side, you have a, you have a virtual iPhone and a virtual iPad, and you can actually use your finger on the screen to see exactly what it looks like, how it flows, how the inertia is working, how the physics of that application are working, how many pages are going on, how the keyboard is reacting, how different buttons react when you want them to react differently. So having an actual touch input on the screen itself to mimic and actually feel what it's gonna be like to run those applications on an iOS device or an iPadOS device makes a lot of sense in my book. So putting a touchscreen panel on these MacBook Pros, the M1 MacBook Pro, and again, probably when it comes out, it'll be the M2 MacBook Pro and things like that, it makes a lot of sense. I am personally not one of those people that needs a situation, but I do see that being a value add and a net positive to people that are coding for these applications and wanna make sure that it's working correctly with their finger and which actual touch input, which is how it's going to be used versus a click and point mouse. So that is another reason why I think having a touch screen on a Mac computer makes a lot of sense for those higher level creative tasks and coding tasks. And then the last reason, which I touched on a little bit is kind of twofold. So if you go to most Windows computers nowadays, they have a touch screen and it's not a touch screen that's kind of thrown in your face. That's like, wow, use my touch screen, use it as a first way of input. You know, this is revolutionary. It's there as a nice to have, right? Whenever I use a Windows computer, I'm using a touchpad, I'm using a keyboard, and then by accident, because of my nature of using the iPad so often, maybe I'll touch the screen by accident and I realize like, oh wow, this is the touch screen, right? This is also working as a touch screen. Now you never use it as a main form of input on that Windows computer, unless you maybe have some sort of stylus or there's an actual application use case. But overall, if you're searching the web, all you really use it for is maybe to scroll when you're holding the computer close to you, or maybe as a X to get rid of that window, but you're never doing anything serious with that touch screen. And I think that's a good way to adopt it on the Apple side, right? You have your main form of input, which is that touchpad. Then you have your secondary, which is a keyboard and maybe a secondary mouse. And then finally, it would be nice to have a tertiary way of inputting and interacting with your MacBook. I am one of those people that because I use my iPad Pro kind of like a laptop, I always go to my MacBook Air and maybe try to click on the screen or maybe put the volume up and down or maybe try to do something quickly and kind of highlight things with my finger. And then I realize like, oh wait, my MacBook doesn't have a touch screen so that doesn't make any sense. So having that as an option is always nice to have. And I know we live in a world where every feature needs to have a real functionality or a real purpose, but sometimes adding things that are just nice to have like a touch screen panel makes some sense. And now that we have those reasonings out of the way, the question is gonna be is how much more is it going to increase the cost or is it gonna keep the cost the same? because it's all fine and dandy when companies add nice to have features while keeping the price point the same or even lowering the price. But once you start offering these touchscreen panels and making it the only way to buy these computers and maybe increasing the price from anywhere from 200 to 500, or maybe even $1,000 because of these new OLED touchscreen panels, then you start to get some backlash like because people don't wanna be forced into paying more money because they have to because Apple isn't giving you an option to get a non touchscreen panel. So I think in 2025, we will see kind of a divvy, right? The MacBook Air, the entry-level MacBooks, all that stuff is gonna remain with a regular panel that doesn't have a touchscreen, and maybe MacBook Pros will be getting touchscreen panels in 2025, and then eventually, once it becomes cheap enough, it'll come down to the cheaper models of MacBooks, and it'll just be a feature that's gonna be around, that's gonna be nice to have overall, but something that's not absolutely needed. So those are my overall thoughts on Mark Gurman's bombshell into the Apple kind of news realm of having a touchscreen panel on a MacBook. Yes, would Steve Jobs be upset? I don't know, maybe he would've adapted over time and said like, hey, maybe it is nice to throw something on there because we live in a world where everything is touch first, where every smartphone, whether it is Android or Apple, you're using your finger to interact with it, right? Whether it is a Samsung Tab S8 or an iPad Pro, you're using your finger to interact with it. The only thing left is a MacBook and we're getting to the world where maybe that flip two in one situation could be coming to Apple with a multi-touch interface on their screens on their MacBook Pros. But that's gonna do it, everybody. If you guys did enjoy, leave some comments down below of what you think overall. Do you think Apple is correct by bringing over touchscreens? Do you think Steve Jobs would be upset? Do you think it's something that maybe isn't really needed overall? Or do you think those use cases that I highlighted kind of make sense? If you guys did make it to the end of the video, leave a little dolphin so I know that you made it to the end. And if you guys wanna watch more Mac OS, iOS, or iPad OS videos, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. I'm curious to see what a touchscreen Mac computer looks like and if they change Mac OS at all to kind of form to it. I don't think they will, but I think it is coming. Peace, everybody.